there is only war. The Golden Throne, the seat of humanity's ruler, the one thing that keeps the Imperium afloat, and demon hordes at bay. Everyone knows about it, but only a handful of people in the Imperium know of its true nature. In the 30th millennia, somewhere amidst the chaos of the Unification Wars, the Emperor stumbled upon an ancient relic from the Dark Age of Technology, hidden deep beneath the sun-scorched desert in Asia. At that time, the sprawling Imperial Palace hadn't even begun to rise in the Himalayas, but this discovery was destined to change the course of human history forever. The core of the Golden Throne, though its true purpose was still shrouded in mystery, was far more than just an impressive piece of machinery. It was a psychic amplifier, with the potential to unlock a portal into the webway, a network connecting the entire galaxy created by the Old Ones and used by Eldar. This portal wasn't just a back door in some cosmic hallway, it was the key to mankind's salvation, at least according to the Emperor's grand vision. No more navigating through the warp, no more relying on temperamental psychers like navigators and astropaths. The webway would allow for near-instant travel between worlds, uniting the Imperium in ways never before imagined. But of course, things weren't so simple. The Golden Throne needed a bit of tinkering. By a bit, I mean tens of thousands of Mechanicus tech priests and a legion of Terran laborers working non-stop to transform it into the linchpin of the Imperial Webway project. The Emperor had grand plans, using the Webway not only to connect mankind's scattered worlds, but also to eliminate the dangers posed by the warp. If all went according to plan, the Imperium could rid itself of psychic mutations entirely, severing the psychic ties that left the humanity vulnerable to chaos. The Webway project was probably the biggest secret Emperor held. Not even the Primarchs, and quite possibly even his right-hand man, Malkador the Sigilite, had a clue about the true scale of the operation. The stakes were simply too high. Imagine how the Navigators, whose control over interstellar travel made them one of the most powerful factions in the galaxy, might react if their entire reason for existence was suddenly obsolete. And so, in the dark of the deepest corners of the Imperial Dungeons, the Golden Throne took shape, and everyone on the surface was misled about its purpose. Once built, it wasn't just a chair, it was a behemoth of machine, a vast throne-like contraption suspended over a massive golden mechanized portal gate, wide enough for a Warhound-class titan to walk through it without ducking. The room itself was a labyrinth, with cables, wires and conduits snaking everywhere, leading from the golden throne to the massive portal. A hall so vast that half of a space marine chapter or even more could have stood there and yet the place was still cluttered with the debris of forgotten machines that had been used up and discarded right there. A red-robed army of Mechanicus technicians toiled endlessly, keeping the throne in working order, although the device required a psychic powerhouse to truly function. In fact, many people believe that was the whole reason for the existence of Magnus the Red. If it weren't for his disastrous dabbling in warp sorcery, getting too friendly with Zeech, he was originally intended to take the Emperor's place on the throne. After all, the Golden Throne needed more than just mechanisms to operate. It needed a being of immense psychic strength to defend the human-built webway from the hands of chaos. The Emperor himself used the throne's psychic amplification to protect the fragile human additions to the webway, since the Eldari had long ago used materials that humanity couldn't replicate to create their warp-resistant tunnels, it was a fragile, delicate project, constantly at risk of being discovered by the forces of chaos or disrupted by internal strife. But like all good secrets, this one couldn't stay hidden forever. The throne, the webway, and all the Emperor's grand plans for a united, psychic-free humanity would eventually come crashing down when the Horus Heresy exploded across the galaxy. And yet, there it sat, the Golden Throne, a relic of forgotten technology, an Emperor's last ditch gamble to secure the future for mankind. A gamble that, in the end, might have been even too ambitious for him.
As the Horus Heresy raged, with the galaxy aflame and chaos spreading its tendrils across the Imperium, Malkador the Sigilite and Rogal Dorn finally received a long-awaited summon to meet with the Emperor. This invitation came at a critical moment, right after news reached Terra of the Dropsite Massacre. When they met with the Emperor, he revealed to them the nature of the Imperial Webway project. The Emperor envisioned recreating the Webway, but now taking it under human control. More than just a means of transportation, it was possible part of the Emperor's plan to protect humanity from the corrupting influence of the Chaos Gods by shielding or eliminating psychers from their grasp. But maintaining the portal was not an easy feat. It required a constant flow of the Emperor's own psychic energy to hold back the warp entities that threatened to breach the webway's fragile walls. At first, this didn't pose much of an issue for the Emperor, who was more than capable of juggling his many responsibilities while keeping the webway secure. But the forces of Chaos had been his enemies for a long time, and they weren't about to let this ambitious project to succeed. Despite Magnus' good intentions, his attempt to warn the Emperor about Horus' betrayal had disastrous consequences. Magnus used powerful warp magic to send his psychic message to Terra, but in doing so, he shattered the psychic barrier the Emperor had placed around the human-built webway. This left the webway vulnerable, and hordes of demons flooded in, slaughtering the Mechanicus workers inside. What followed was a brutal, bloody battle known as the War Within the Webway. The Legio Custodes and the Sisters of Silence fought to contain the demonic incursion, but their numbers were limited, while the demons seemed endless. Though the Emperor's forces managed to destroy or banish many demons, more always came. As the fighting intensified, the demons began pushing deeper into the Imperial defenses, but their efforts were like trying to hold back a river of demons. The defenders were eventually forced to retreat. The demons pressed on until they came dangerously close to the Golden Throne itself. In the final act of desperation, the Emperor appeared to his soldiers within the webway, his psychic power blazing like a star. The demons, unable to withstand the Emperor's immense might, hesitated. This gave the defenders enough time to pull back and evacuate the remaining tech priests and Sisters of Silence through the portal and into the Imperial Palace. But this victory came at a cost. The Emperor now had to remain on the Golden Throne, using all his psychic strength to keep the portal sealed against the war. Without a psyker of his caliber to maintain the barriers, the webway would collapse and Terra itself would be overrun by demons. In the aftermath of the war in the webway, Vulcan arrived at the Sanctum Imperialis. Guided by the Emperor, he installed the Talisman of the Seven Hammers, a dead man's switch designed to annihilate both the Imperial Palace and Terra itself if the Golden Throne ever failed. This grim failsafe was put in place to ensure that if chaos ever broke through, they would never claim the throne world. The Emperor's grand vision of human control webway, well, it was ruined. After Horus' defeat, Dorn carried the gravely injured Emperor back to the Golden Throne in a desperate effort to save his life. But upon their return, they discovered an equally heart-wrenching scene. Malgador the Sigilite, who had been sitting upon the Golden Throne in the Emperor's absence, was in the final moments of his life. The incredible strain of maintaining the psychic defenses of the failing Imperial Webway had ravaged his body, and he was barely alive when Dorn and the Tech Priests arrived. The Tech Priests worked quickly to transfer the Emperor to the Golden Throne, disconnecting Malkador from the ancient device so it could sustain the Emperor's crippled life functions. In his final moments, Malkador's body, shriveled and tormented, finally gave out, crumbling into dust as the last flicker of life left him. His remains scattered across the cold stone floor, a symbol of his ultimate sacrifice. Despite his agony, Malkador proved his loyalty and devotion to the Emperor in his dying moments. He gathered the last vestiges of his psychic power and willingly transferred it to the Emperor, giving his own life force to sustain his beloved master for just a little longer. This final act of sacrifice allowed the Emperor to briefly awaken from his near-death coma. In this fleeting moment of consciousness, the Emperor spoke one last time, his words directed to Rogal Dorn, Jogadai Khan and the others present, words that were his final orders, commands that would shape the future of the Imperium for the next 10,000 years. Poor 
brave Malkador the hero. He reserved a fragment of his strength for me. It gives me a little time to pass final orders to you. If you do as I ask, then I shall not wholly die. My spirit at least will survive. My injuries are severe, more so than I hoped, but less than I feared. My psychic powers will return to me in time, but my body will never heal. I shall never walk amongst you again. I am now bound to this machine for all time. My faithful bodyguard and attendants know what is required. You must do as they request. Dorn and Jagadai, you have much work to do. Though the head of the serpent has been destroyed, its coils still choke the safety of mankind. You and your loyal brothers must fight on. Cleanse the taint of treachery from our stars. Never again must we allow the ruinous powers of chaos to have such a chance. Now, all of you go. You know your duties. Execute them well. The universe has many horrors yet to throw at us. This is not the end of our struggle. This is just the beginning of our crusade to save humanity. Be faithful. Be strong. Be vigilant. So, I took these Emperor's last words from the Horus Heresy Volume 4, Visions of Death, and I must say, they might not be true and could be the Imperial propaganda, or maybe they are true, I don't know. Well, I guess at least now we have a closure regarding what were the Emperor's last words before taking his silent vigil. I will just presume that Dan Abnett didn't bother to reach out to Alan Merritt about this topic specifically, even though he should have. Still, it is good to have at least something, I guess. By the late M36, the Golden Throne had begun to demand a greater toll to remain functional. The psychers whose life force was fed into the throne to sustain its power were needed in increasing numbers, signaling degradation in process. As the centuries passed, this problem only worsened. By the early years of M41, the numbers of psychers required to maintain optimal power levels had quadrupled. But the true crisis struck in the final years of M41. The tech priests of the Imperium made a catastrophic discovery. There were now profound failures within the mechanisms of the Golden Throne that were far beyond their ability to repair. The throne, the device that sustained the Emperor's fragile life and held back the warp from breaching Terra, was on the brink of total collapse. Faced with this apocalyptic scenario, several high-ranking members of the Imperium knew they had to act. The looming threat to the throne meant not just the death of the Emperor, but the potential annihilation of the Imperium itself. If the Golden Throne was to fail, chaos would pour into the material world through Terra, turning humanity's homeworld into a nightmarish battlefield, or worse, another Eye of Terror. So what are your thoughts on the Golden Throne? Do you think there is an alternate way to fix the Humanities Webway project? And do you believe those were the actual Emperor's last words? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my daily upload. Join my Patreon for just $2 a month to get access to some of the most amazing high-definition never-seen-before Warhammer 40,000 artworks that you can download and use as you want. Every month we post something new there, so I promise you will get the best bang for your buck and more. Become a member to cast your vote for the weekly content and remember to join the Discord to show your memes. With that in mind, I'll see you next time. Nerd.